Graham it is your boy Graham Green, and we are back with another Graham Green Graham Cam Extended Edit, and this is my adventures through Electric Zoo 2019. Hectic time for your boy, but we made it work and had such a magical experience. Before moving forward, my name is Graham Green. I'm a videographer, vlogger, DJ, and aspiring producer, bringing you the most lit and epic content from the underground rhythm and dubstep scene. I've been doing it since 2015, and since then, I've taken up my own journey going through this crazy world of DJing and producing and bringing you guys along for the ride. Welcome back, guys. Going back into the past, uh, you know how I like to do, and we're going into the end of August, beginning of September, kind of. I just came back from my trip to Europe. Main reason was to attend Shivers, my papa, his wedding, which was an amazing experience. And I also went to play a show in Paris, Drop and Bass, which is nutty, as you guys saw in the previous edit. Here we are back in the United States the same week. Your boy is tired. <laughs> he was in another continent, makes it back to the United States. I had originally planned to go to Electric Zoo back in June after Ever After when I experienced that Green Velvet and Chris Lake set. I was hooked. Experiencing Chris Lake and Green Velvet at Ever After really like changed things for me. I love the music so much. Even though I already loved it before, I had a new passion for it. So when I heard that Anti Up, which is Chris Lorenzo and Chris Lake were playing at Izu, I had to go. Not only that, but we had the homie Blunts and Blondes and Murata playing. So it was just a win, win, win. The cherry on top of all that, Green Velvet was playing. And if you guys know, he's one of my favorite DJs, producers out there when he doesn't come to dubstep and rhythm. He is my Don. I planned early on in June, make sure to get my ticket secured. So I called to find out if my ticket was all good and I'm good to go because I don't want to go to the festival and not be able to get in. And unfortunately, it was not secured and I no longer had a ticket. Yeah, it was kind of devastating because I've been looking forward to it for so long. And sometimes when I put high expectations in my mind and I don't meet them, it really crushes me. And I was a sad, mopey Milton for a very long time. But at one point I was talking to my friend Jenya, who you will see in this video, who came with me. And I was just like, bro, I've been talking about this for months and I'm gonna let it just like fall out of my hands like that. Like, no, I'm gonna make sure it happened. This was 11 p.m. on a Friday. I was trying to go Saturday because Sunday I had a show in Chicago. So th this is a crazy schedule that I make for myself. At that time, I started looking and manifesting on Facebook, trying to find a ticket. 3 a.m., found a ticket. I was able to buy it the next day, bought one for my friend as well, and we were off to Izu. Mind you, I didn't have much money because as I said previously, before I went to Europe, I had to put in a lot of money into my car. So all my money went there. So when I came back from Europe, I had even less money, but your boy got into his car, started driving Lyft, made the money needed to pay for the ticket. I don't care, if I have a plan, I am going to see it through, even if it means me grinding my ass off and doing whatever possible to make it happen. And that's what I did. I bought the ticket at three in the morning from some girl in Newark, New Jersey. I uh, drove down the next morning to go get it. Everything was good. Then I made my way to the city, had an adventure of my own. The first time I attended Izu was probably in 2012 and to see its growth is crazy. And also the selection of the lineup, I'm enjoying a lot more. Without further ado, let's get into this edit. Don't forget to do that ting, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think of this video. And I'll be popping up here and there, giving you some context of the video, what's happening, what's going through my mind, and all that. Cheers! Oi, it's your boy, Bram Green. Today's Saturday, Izu's happening. And I'm out here in New York. We're gonna change that. Cheers! Keep a lot. Hello, hi, so I'm popping up. I actually lived in New York City uh, back in 2016. My parents kicked me out because of Grand Green. Uh, they didn't really support what I was doing back then. I mean, no fault to them. Yeah, that was a very formative time in my life. I lived there for four months with my aunt and it was a struggle and a half. Back then I was so broke, it was not even a joke. I sold everything, I sold my CDJs, I sold a lot of sneakers, I sold clothes, everything to stay afloat. Second easy, thanks to the kindness of my friends who purchased my ticket and I was able to go the first day, the second day, I purchased a ticket that was very cheap, it was like $30, and the third day I snuck in. I was really into the tech now, in the house, and I was like addicted, so I needed to keep going. Goes to show that, you know, back in the day in 2016 I was struggling, now I'm still struggling in a different aspect though, we are better, but we had the ability to make the money on our own, not really sell any of our, our belongings, and make Izu a great fucking experience. Oi, it is your boy, Graham Green. We're out here in New York City, about to go do something really cool. We're going to Izu for the first time in like three years. Last time I went, I was in a completely different state of mind. I was actually around this area too. Yeah, I was living with my aunt around that time. And uh, wow, this is crazy. I actually didn't really think about that. And here we are back at Lincoln Center. Huh. I am going to Izu. Yes, so I've been planning this since the beginning of the summer, ever since 
uh, ever after happened with uh, Green Velvet and Chris Lake and all that. I was just, I just love the techno, the tech house and all that. It's, it's my ting, the ounce red ting, you know what I'm playing? So I decided to, uh, you know, make the journey out to Izu once again. So the only way for me to make it was to um, grind really hard, save up the money and get some tickets. And today I went to Newark, picked it up from someone and hopefully they work out. Bringing my, my homie Jenya, someone who has uh, supported me since like the beginning. And uh, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be a great time. You know, there's gonna be some dubstep and rhythm there, but I'm really going for the tech now. And I'm excited that I was able to make this work because your boy wasn't supposed to go, but now I'm going. And that's what the Graham Green lifestyle is about, you know? Like you put your mind to something, you do it. You don't let shit hold you back. You don't let other people, you know, determine your happiness and shit like that. You make your own happiness. And I am fucking happy as fuck because I worked my ass off. I got the ticket and we're going. Oh, by the way, if you guys are wondering, it's an icy hot patch. My, my neck hurts a lot. Anyways, we're gonna continue the journey. Don't forget to do that thing, like, comment, and subscribe. I love you guys always. And, uh, cheat. I had to use the bathroom. Okay, why am I in the bathroom? Well, uh, <laughs> Your boy decided to buy some beer beforehand, so I was like chugging these beers on the way to the subway. And I have a very small bladder, so I needed to use the bathroom. I'm probably like two blocks away from the bridge where you cross into Randall's Island. I still had to wait for my friend, so I was just uh, I was like, fuck, I need to take a piss. And this is like way too much sunlight for me to take a piss in public, so what are we going to do, Milton? And I walk into the first building that I see, and I'm like, hey, can I use your bathroom? And they're like, yeah, sure, you just have to watch a video afterwards. And I'm like, okay, like... And then I'm like, what, where am I? What building did I walk into? And well, you'll find out. So I came to a building and it turns out to be the Church of Scientology and I'm gonna have to watch a video and everything. So maybe I'll get a little grand cam. Sometimes experience self-doubts, negative thoughts, unreasonable feet. So they made me watch this video and then later on they asked me a couple questions. You'll hear me talking to the woman. I was just wasting time because I had to wait for my friend, but ah, I was just like, what the, this is weird. I'm about to go and lose my mind to some music, but yeah, let me go to uh, the Church of Scientology to take a piss. Mind you, I chugged the beer in the bathroom too, because, great, great. I got to use rational. You know those uh, documentaries where someone goes from the beginning, like, oh, my life is a wreck, and then they like, you know, explain why their life got so much better because of Scientology. And maybe some reality shows. Who knows, maybe they bring some people who aren't into Scientology to, to co not convert them, but show them the light and see if like they change their mind and whatnot. And how would you rate your overall I am a very transparent person. I would say somewhat negative, just because I feel like if you want to leave a church, it should be easy instead of like, making it more of a challenge. Would you like that to be anything else you would like? Sure, yeah. What's your education like? I actually went to college and I graduated. It's the most expensive piece of paper I have in my living room, but you know, I did it. Yeah, yes, oh, bachelor's. Right. Communications at Rutgers in New Brunswick. What yeah. did you do? Uh, what did I do with it? I guess I, I started doing my own social media kind of thing. Like I do video work and everything like that. I DJ, I produce music. So I took all that and made it to like, have my own company. I, I can't fire myself, which is the best right. part. If I mess up, it's like, oh, I'm the only employee, so. <laughs> a single as a dollar bill, never married. So after the Church of Scientology, I meet up with my good friend, Jenya, who has been a mega supporter of Graham Greene since the beginning. Uh, actually, in 2018, he invested into Graham Greene and helped me purchase a lot of merchandise that I would later sell in Australia and throughout the United States. So this guy has always been on top of it. I love him dearly. He's been trying to go to a show with me for a very long time. So made it happen this time. And I think he had an amazing time. Jenya is someone that I introduced Rhythm to. Uh, he also likes house and techno. So he's all about the life, but he hasn't gone to too many shows. So this was actually like his first, I don't know, festival kind of thing, especially with me. I feel like anyone who joins me on these ex excursions usually have really good times. And I'm not just tooting my own horn, but these are facts. Here we are walking across the bridge. Later on at night, I would walk this bridge again, but it was a lot different at night. It gets really spooky there. Not spooky, but like, there's a lot of walkers as I call them. You know what I mean? So you always gotta watch out for that. Good time tonight. Hey, the <laughs> second best looking person I know. Right behind me. 
But Izu, always a great time. I'm just glad that I didn't have to sneak in this time because you know, your boy is not about that life anymore. Anyways, I'll see you guys soon. Working very hard all of these years. Yo, Your boy made it. Fucking Izu. What's happening? To take you to all the most beautiful and exquisite places around the world. I promise not to take you too far because the world is flat and will fall off. Do you really think that I got issues?
fucking good. Here we are. I brought extra clothes to, to Electric Zoo and I changed into another outfit because that's what you're pointing out. sets and things start getting really interesting before even entering izu or anything like that i don't know i have a tendency if i'm going to go to a festival to listen to techno or house i like to take shrooms or acid that's my thing i don't know so my mission was to find some acid or shrooms that night felt like it was going to be relatively easy but it was not i gave myself up until 8 p.m to consume whatever i was going to consume because i needed to get on a flight 12 hours later to go to chicago and play a show 
all day. I'm looking for it. I'm asking people here and there. I'm looking for my friends who may have, but they don't know anyone. So I'm just like, oh, I might be shit out of luck. Oh, well, it's not the end of the world. After asking so many different people in the techno tent, I decided to go uh, to my roots and go to the dubstep. Uh, Sage. It was 7.51. I'm like, God damn, I have nine minutes to find it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. But I started manifesting, 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 manifesting. I walk into where, you know, the crowd is by the stage. The one thought in my head was just like, I really hope someone recognizes me as Graham Greene. And right when I thought about it, someone was like, hey, you're Graham Greene. I was like, what? And he also had a Montreal accent. So I'm like, whoa, this is getting a little weird. So I go up to him, I'm like, hey bro, what's up, man? And he was like flustered, grabbed his phone, went on his Instagram, went to the DMs and he showed me. He didn't even say anything. I read the message, pretty much says like, well, I'll show you the screenshot actually. And it was pretty much him trying to meet up with me. I wasn't sure at the time if I was going to Electric Zoo or not, but I said like, if I do show up, it is your mission to find me. After I read that, he looks at me and he's like, mission completed. I'm like, wow, life is fucking crazy, guys. That all happened and I'm like, damn, fuck, life would be really cool if I could get a tab of acid right now. So I asked my homie, I'm like, bro, do you by chance have any acid on you? And he was like, nah, man, I'm so sorry. I'm like, ah, it's okay, it's worth a shot. Hey, it was great meeting you. Thanks for coming up to me. I really appreciate it, bro. And he's like, wait, 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 hold up. But my girlfriend might have. Amazing. So she actually did have. And I look at my clock and it's 7.58. Impeccable timing. <laughs> Take it, go see Green Velvet, and then anti up afterwards. And both sets nutty, as you guys will see in these clips.
tech house you know house groovy whatever you want to call the genre they're my thing the main reason i went to izu obviously i love green velvet i love Murata, i love blondes and blondes but the main reason was for antia that's why i was willing to dish out 150 dollars for the ticket to go see one person because i am dedicated like that i love the music so much that i am willing to do that and i did like i said life works out beautifully i met this guy in montreal who dm'd me on his instagram saying that he wanted to meet with me and this person provided a tab of acid that I was originally looking for all day long at the perfect time. And it gets even better, guys. I'm gonna take you back in time to August when my car first started shitting on me because of the whole Valhalla excursion because I drove like over a thousand miles on a broken axle. Eventually, at the end of August, my car just shat on me. I remember bringing my car to the mechanic. He was driving it around a lot more aggressively than he should have and literally my axle broke and he had to get a tow truck. At the time I had no money so I couldn't even get a Lyft or Uber and my house was three miles away. Instead of, you know, trying to figure out that situation, I was like, you know what, Milton, you need to walk three miles and learn that we can't keep doing this shit to our car and we need to take responsibility for our actions. I walked three miles. It took me about like an hour and 30 minutes. I was so tired because half of it was inclined. During this uh, three mile excursion, I decided to listen to a song that appeared in my life recently that I used to listen to a lot back in the day. I, I think I heard it on TV or a commercial or something. It is called Where's Your Head At by Basement Jacks. And this was one of my favorite songs growing up. Totally forgot about it for like more than a decade. Came back to my mind and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna listen to this shit. And that song has become an anthem for me. I always listen to it, always pumps me up. And I remember doing that three mile walk being like, damn, it would be so crazy to hear this at a festival, you know, with the full sound. But this song came out forever ago. Chances of that happening, very slim to none. Oh, 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 not with your boy, Mr. Green. Here we are. The next clip really set me off. It, it put me to another dimension, all right? This is how crazy life fucking can be. And I cannot make this shit up. I'm really good at noticing when songs are coming in and transitions of DJ for like, close to a decade now, so it's kind of like rudimentary for me. And here I am standing, you know, I'm feeling the acid, feeling groovy. And then I hear the synth, then I hear the, the snare, the drum, and I'm like, wait, I know this song. And well, I'll let the video speak for itself. <laughs>
in this edit, basement jacks. Where's your head at? I think there's an anti up edit, but regardless, the fact that this song was played after I tr I was thinking about it a month ago, at like the worst that it could be depressively, and then here we are. Everything just falling into place magically. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I cried for 10 minutes straight, cause it was just so beautiful being there, hearing it, just reflecting on the whole day, the whole, whole journey, in essence, like I wasn't even supposed to go. My original ticket wasn't valid anymore, but that didn't stop me. I got in my car, I made $150 in one night, and I bought those tickets and I went for like what six hours I really enjoy this this like dedication and drive that I have sometimes a little too much but for moments like these it really does help me a lot knowing that like if I put my mind to something I can do it you made it to the end of another Graham Green Graham Cam extended edit and this was of my adventures going through Electric Zoo 2019 definitely going back if I'm around would love to what happened after this um not not the best not the best so like I said before I took that tab of acid a little before eight so obviously it's going to be affecting me the whole night you know projected time is like eight to twelve hours so I figured like hey I'll just probably just stay up until my flight my flight's not until like 8 a.m. so I have a lot of time as I was leaving the festival trying to decide what I was gonna do I was gonna go to an after party or do this or do that walking across the bridge I realized that I was so fucking tired that I couldn't even stand. It was as if all the traveling that I did that summer caught up to me in that moment. And oh my God, I just wanted to go home. I just wanted to go home so badly. Uh, but I was kind of far because Randall's Island, not the furthest away from, uh, from where I live in New Jersey, but it is a little bit of a trek. I plan ahead and I knew I was going to Chicago the next day. So my aunt lives in the city, like I mentioned before. She lives by Lincoln Center. Early on, before I go to Izu, I go to her place. I drop off my luggage and all my other shit. And I'll be like, okay, after Electric Zoo is done, I'm gonna come back, get my shit, go to the airport. Easy, one, two, three. As I was crossing this bridge, I was so tired that I just wanted to go home and sleep and be with my cat. <laughs> this was like around, I would wanna say midnight when this idea is coming to my head. Usually when an idea comes to my head, it's really hard to shake. Before even making it across the bridge, I make a decision, go to my friend's house, Nandis, who lives close by to me, order some Uber Eats, get up, take buses and trains to my aunt's house, and then take buses and trains to go to the airport, make it on time. One, two, three, ABC, everyone's happy, right? Right? Well, mind you, I could have gone back to my aunt's house, which is literally 20 minutes away from the venue, but I was a little wound. The next option was going home, but I'm like, actually, I don't want to go home either. Make a decision to go to my best friend's house and chill there until the flight, right? Get across Randall's Island. Once we get into Harlem, in New York is not the best of places to be at night, it was a fucking shit show. There was cops, there was homeless people, there were crackheads, there were, it was a lot. It was a lot to, to take in. Take an Uber to the George Washington Bridge Terminal, and then from there, take a bus into my town, and then from there, walk to my friend's house. While I'm walking, I order some Uber Eats, $30 worth of food, I'm so ready to chill. I get to his house, I get all cozy, I look at my food, then I wake up at like 6 a.m. <laughs> my flight's at eight. I'm in New Jersey and my luggage is in Midtown, New York. <sighs> this is why I don't sleep. I panic, get my shit together, order a lift, which was $60 to go to Midtown. Then uh, once I get all my shit from there, order another lift, another $60 to go to the airport. I'm at the airport, we make it on time, thankfully. I'm about to take the flight and I was taking Spirit and they saw that I had an extra bag and they charged me another $60 on top of that. Let's not forget about the $30 of Uber Eat food that I did not eat. Oh, and then we'll add also the ticket for Izu and all the extra shit that I bought, like food and drinks and whatnot. That's a lot of money and literally 48 hours. So although Izu was great, it did come at a cost. I've learned from it. I've become a lot more responsible, but regardless, it was definitely worth it. I made it to my flight and then the next couple hours later, play a sold out show with Ominous, Chemist, the Sewer Session Boys, Low Key, Severe, all the homies. That was the best way to end the summer. That's literally, the the whole thing that I wanted to say with the whole video and everything, this is how you fucking end a summer. That's how I did it. I started off this journey on this channel in May, trying to really find myself, prove to myself that I deserve the best and also that I work hard for what I have. If this edit doesn't show you that, then I don't know what else will. Thanks to everyone who participated in this video. Shout out to my friend Jenya who, who came through and uh, bulled with me. Shout out to everyone that I met at the festival. You guys are amazing. Thanks for tuning in to something a little different. I know it's not just like dubstep and rhythm. I wanna, you know, bring you guys into my life a little more, share these adventures that are kinda crazy, guys. I'm not gonna lie, it's fucking a movie and a half. Thank you guys so much. I'll catch you guys on the Flippy Flip. Cheers! Graham Green.